Every single day when we fast, at the end of each day, we should sit down and talk to ourselves, talk to your family. Has this day benefited me? Has it made me more fearful of Allah Ta'ala, more obedient? Has it aided me in distancing myself from disobedience, from wrongdoing, from my shortcomings? Ramadan, we got to understand, is a month of training, a fortress of taqwa. And if you do not get trained in this month, you will be unable to pass the exams that come after it. So you will need this taqwa, since it's a training, a fortress of training, to attain more taqwa, you will need this taqwa when? To successfully pass the trials, the exams that the Almighty Lord will confront you with after Ramadan. But unfortunately what we see is that when Ramadan comes, people run immediately to their house to Allah Ta'ala. As soon as Ramadan hits, you see people gushing forth, running to their homes to Allah in repentance. They get home, they open the, gar they open the cupboard in their house, and they put the garment of worship. What did I put? The garment of, it's called the garment of worship, the garment of Islam, the garment of salvation. They put the garment of la ilaha illallah, the garment of, ob of obedience, you can call it. They start praying, they start doing dhikr, they start doing reciting the Quran, they do all acts of worship, devout worshipping, dedicating, motivating their day and night to Allah. No sooner than Ramadan is finished, they pray their read prayer, they run back home to Allah. Allah to the devil. They run back home, but only this time they open the, the cupboard. <sighs> Take the garment of worship off, of obedience off, of Islam off, and they put the garment of disobedience, wickedness, mischievousness, wrongdoing, oppression, the garment of disbelief on. Go back on the edge, back to their normal evil habits. These are called the Ramadan worshippers. They think that Allah Ta'ala exists only in the month of Ramadan, not knowing that the Almighty Lord who is the Lord of the month of Ramadan, is also the Lord of the remaining months. And not knowing that this was only but a training for them to successfully pass the test that Allah examined them with after Ramadan. And as the predecessor said, how wretched are a people who do not know Allah Ta'ala only in Ramadan, how evil they are. They are the Ramadan worshippers. And what we got to understand is that one of the signs of the acceptance of Ramadan is that Ramadan is followed up with what? With good deeds. With good deeds, not bad deeds, with good deeds. Because if you follow it up with bad deeds, you take that garment of worship off, you have not benefited. You have lost. So one of the signs of the acceptance of Ramadan is that garment remains on. On and you stabilize it. You strengthen it by worshipping the one that created it. Likewise, another benefit that we gain from Ramadan is acquiring patience. As Ibn Abdul Bar mentions, that the month of Ramadan is a month of patience as it restrains the people from eating, drinking and sexual intercourse. And indeed, wallahi, we see this. When the month of Ramadan hits, people worldwide, Muslims worldwide, adorn themselves with this beautiful attribute. And while they adorn themselves with it, they have full conviction, full certainty in devotion and love to the saying of our beloved Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that victory comes with patience, relief, with affliction and ease, with difficulty. And indeed, this is true. 
for patience, especially in this month, is the pinnacle of self-discipline. It changes the phrase from being, I cannot, into, I can. From the difficulty to the ease, it is, you can say, an inner and psychological demolition of that which is believed or perceived by people as being the impossible. An example of this is smoking. The evil, prohibited, unlawful, abominated, filthy smoking habit. Throughout the Ramadan, what, they, what do they do? Without, before Ramadan, I say, no, I cannot stop smoking. I can never stop smoking. But subhanAllah, when Ramadan hits, they immediately abstain from this evil drug, this deadly drug, from morning to night. Okay, what happened there? What is this I can't stuff? So patience turns the phrase I cannot to I can. So when you love Allah Ta'ala, you do anything to love Allah. Allah Ta'ala, so He can love you. So this is what patience does, dear beloved. So if we can exercise patience in this blessed month, we can exercise patience in virtually every other month of the year. Likewise, Ramadan is a month that we draw near to Allah Ta'ala and we all know the authentic narration that when Ramadan comes, the gates of paradise are open. The gates of hellfire are locked and the devils are chained. Since the devils are chained, the evil jinn, they are bound in shackles, bonds and chains, in locks. This is why you see the people more inclined to worship. So Allah Ta'ala is giving you a break, a chance, a way out to practice in this beautiful month. So you can carry this practice, this training, after Ramadan as well. And you see many people, they read the Quran. And many of them finish the reciting of the Quran in one month. If not twice or three times. It is a month, alhamdulillah. As soon as I open this, sneeze, huh? You see them reciting the book of Allah Ta'ala. You see them doing a lot of dhikr, a lot of istighfar, a lot of tawbah. You see, extending their hands to the poor and needy, to their families, to their relatives, to their cousins, to their friends. They're being most generous. Now it's a beautiful, blessed month with a lot of reward. You see them contacting their family members. And you subhanAllah, what a beautiful month, especially this month that we see a lot of us reconnecting our ties with those that are extended not immediate family, but extended, far from, far family members, you can call them. And look, we are living in a society. You can call it an endangered institution in Western society. The family is. You know, we don't see each other much. This is a time where we connect to these people, to our relatives. Why? It is a month of invitation and visitation. A month where you go and see each other and you talk to each other. So you are nearer to these people and this is getting near to Allah Ta'ala. Likewise, Husnul Khuluk, good character. This is a time where people forget and forgive. They reconcile. They forget their quarrels and their disputes and their arguments with such and such person. They break their pride. They get a glass, a rock and break that pride. The glass is the pride. They break it. Saying, even though I'm in the right, huh? even though I have been oppressed, I'm going to break this pride. It's a beautiful, blessed month, and I'm going to connect this tie with my beloved brother or sister in Islam. And wallahi, he has benefited, she has benefited. It is a time whereby you sit down, dear beloved, and ponder, contemplate, reflect upon your life. If you haven't got a wife, upon yourself. You got a wife with your wife. You got children with your children. You got mother and father and brother and sister with them. Sit down. Discuss your shortcomings. Put a paper in front of you. 
Document your shortcomings. I want to fix myself up. I'm a Muslim.